Hello, recruits! Welcome to Katurn. Hope you enjoy your stay. Don't get eaten. Hello! Welcome to Citanium Mine, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Beyond Contact, which is a very interesting game, a survival crafting game, top-down style, uh, that takes place on an alien world, and it involves things like base building, and crafting, and not getting eaten, and also probably dying a few times, because the natives are not happy that you were there. Well, some of them. Some of them are cool. You have to kind of figure this out. There's a little bit of diplomacy, too. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let me tell you a little bit about Beyond Contact. Game starts with you playing Quinn Hicks, and you are responding to a distress signal on an alien world, but then your ship crash lands on that world, too. This is your first experience in Katurn an alien world with many different biomes that are hazardous to your health. Some of them are very hot, some of them are very cold. Some of them have spores in them that you don't want to get into your lungs. And so you have to figure out really quickly how to craft yourself the necessary equipment and supplies to survive. Uh, and this is really how the game gets rolling. Immediately when you start seeing the game, uh, you're going to notice that the game looks pretty nice. It actually does. It, it has a very nice style to it. Little cartoonish, but not overly so. Uh, and it has nice, vibrant colors and everything to it. And, uh, you know, the character models, but also specifically the, uh, the alien monsters, the uh, animals on the planet, have some really nice modeling to them. Very expressive, lively. Um, animated, if you will. The next thing that you're going to realize is that you might not be sold on the control scheme. At least I wasn't, but the reason was apparently because I was working on controller. Uh, when I moved to a keyboard and mouse, I realized that a lot of my control issues about picking things up or accessing certain areas uh, were not as contact sensitive, and therefore it made it much easier. It also makes it much easier to do the building part, which we're going to get into in a minute. But in general, uh, I would say as long as you're on like a mouse and keyboard, you're probably not going to have too many problems when it comes to the control scheme, although you can use a controller if you want. Quinn Hicks is a character that starts off just trying to figure out what happened on this planet and eventually has to make friends with the locals. Uh, mostly the Clawtooth, which is a warrior race that is on this planet and is uh, having some problems of their own. And you can help them out, gain their trust, and they will give you some more missions. Because there is actually a story and missions that are going around, mostly revolving around these, like, void crystals and these, like, black holes that are around the planet that you might need to close. And so there's mysteries that abound on Katurn, and it is your job to pretty much figure out how to solve those mysteries. There's a lot of exploration. It is a procedurally generated world, and so each time you go in, you will probably find some new and unique things. Also worth note is I, I said you played Quinn Hicks, and that is true at the start. However, you earn credits by doing things in the game, and those will allow you to unlock other characters that you can then play the game as if you wanted to. If you do a new game, you could play it as a different kind of character. And they all have unique abilities. Uh, the thing that I really liked about Quinn, though, is she has this ability to uh, put out, like, remote turrets. She can toss out these turrets and uh which makes combat much easier because if you just take a few mobile turrets with you and just chuck them down in a few different places and you upgrade it a bit you uh you f you find that you know large engagements with enemies are much improved also especially once you get into the larger animals of this world some which like phase in and out of existence uh, some that are giant sand snakes that erupt through the ground. 
Uh, you, you might find that having some mobile turrets is very useful. You can also craft a few different kinds of weapons in the game, and of course you craft things like your uh, pickaxes and your shovels and helmets and your armor so that you can survive a lot better. These also have modifications to protect you from some of the different elements in the game. There is also a mechanic where it goes from day to night when night falls you will start getting cold, and if you don't have a way to heat yourself up, you will start taking damage from being cold. Uh, you can also very easily wind up in biomes where you will just get set on fire if you're not careful. Uh, things like that happen a lot, and you might need to know how to protect yourself from that very quickly. There is a full crafting system in this as well, and you get used to the basic crafting pretty early on, but then you get into what I think is a more interesting part of this, which is like the base building. You learn how to make walls and doors and floors and everything like that, and eventually fences, and even later on in the game, how to make like force fields that you can pass through easily, but that enemies can't. And this base building part is great. You can put down turrets, you can put down shield arrays, you can uh, try to get you know, different kinds of ways to power and store the energy in your base, battery banks, so that when night falls, your solar arrays that you've put up might not be producing anything, because it's dark. But you have battery bays, so maybe you can keep some of that energy and run through the night, hopefully, with how much you've put down. And you start to find other things that you can use. Uh, you have little bio-shroom generators, so if you collect bio-mushrooms, you can put them in there. Uh, you have uh, these little shock jelly things that are going around, and if you have nets, you can catch them, and you can put them into this special little containment field, and they'll produce power for a while. This is actually kind of an interesting thing, which is that there isn't just like one source of power in this game. You keep coming up with some new innovative ways to create power. There are windmills, but the windmills are really more useful if you are in an area where there's high winds. They'll produce a lot more energy. Still, they'll produce consistent energy, so you might find them useful regardless, because they'll even work throughout the night. You will get, like, a void reactor, and so if you have void crystals, you can power it with that. That produces energy for a lot longer. You will also need to eat in this game. There are three basic meters that you have to keep track of. There's your health, pretty self-explanatory. There's your stamina, which goes down because you're doing things in the game. And then there is your oxygen, because you are on an alien world. So your oxygen meter is going to be important. These three things need to be kept up. Your health, obviously, because when your health reaches zero, you're dead. Your stamina, because if you don't eat, your stamina goes down to zero and you start taking damage. And your oxygen, because if you run out of oxygen, you suffocate, you stay tar start taking damage, and then you die. So these are the three basic things that you have to constantly maintain. And so food is going to be a big thing, which you can either get from the monsters on this world, or by foraging. Now, to make things even easier for you, they do give you the ability to dig up different plants in the world and replant them elsewhere. Eventually, you can learn how to make better version of, like, the berry bushes and plant them inside and propagate them for better fruits. And so this has a bit of a farming aspect to it as well. There's a lot of really interesting things that are going on in this game, and every time you start to kind of feel like you know what's happening, they throw something else at you. Uh, I was, you know, getting my base together and everything and setting up a few defenses, and then there was like a sandstorm that came through, or an ice storm that comes through, and it's your your building starts taking damage. And if you have plants that are out 
in that area, uh, they might actually get destroyed entirely because of frost. Uh, there are times when enemies, uh, the mean claw tooth or, uh, or something else, attacks your base. And so you need to have defenses up. And guess what? If your base runs out of power and gets overloaded, your defenses all go down. So you got to know that you have plenty of power regardless of when they're going to attack. Building multiple bases, setting down teleporters, going through uh, the different tech trees by collecting research data, there's a lot of really interesting things going on. Uh, your personal upgrades, the new abilities that you get over the course of time through research and through collecting. There's a lot of little things that are going on that interact really well with each other and kind of feed into themselves. Like, if I collect a lot of plants, I get plant data, and I can use that plant data in order to research stuff in a tech tree that allows me to do things like build fertilizer or, you know, uh, propagate more plants that allows me to get more plant data that I can use elsewhere. If I mine for minerals, then I get mineral data as well, and I can use that mineral data to get better picks so that I can mine better. They, they do a really good job of doing these feedback loops into each other uh, over the course of time. And if you couldn't tell by now, I was really happy with this game. I, I thought that it was a really fun experience throughout. It gives you story stuff and lots of little missions that you can go on to either craft things or explore the world or learn more about it. But it doesn't just behold you to that. It's not just that. There's lots of stuff to just explore and go off into the world looking for. You encounter all of these new places, these frozen fields and these lava pits and these swamps. And you start to realize that they all have character to themselves, certain resources that you need to get, certain monsters that live there, uh, different alien races that are around that will be able to help you on your main quest line. And so there's these larger overarching things that you're doing, but the thing that's really great about it is that there's also all of this smaller stuff of just making sure that you don't run out of oxygen, going off to see if you can find oxygen deposits, or that you can get air sacs so that you can build yourself, you know, oxygen tanks that you can keep with you, uh, making sure that you don't die in the random attack by little, little claw creatures, you know, lots of fun things like that, where if you just want to explore the world, you have that option. And there's enough survival mechanics to keep you engaged where you know that you can't just slack off. But at the same time, it's not so weighted towards that where you can't just enjoy the game for what it is. Uh, you don't have to constantly look at it. And they will usually remind you well ahead of time that, hey, your oxygen is only at half capacity. So, it gives you survival mechanics, but not so oppressively so that you can't still just enjoy the game for what it is. And I like the way that formula works. So much so that I haven't really completed the story mode yet, even though I'm probably 30 hours in or so. But I do have an itch to try playing a different character and going in in maybe a different mode and trying some things now that I've really gotten used to the mechanics of the game. It is that interesting as a concept. Uh, I know that there are some other games that are similar to this, I just have not played them myself, but I do like this idea of being able to go to this alien world and build your bases and have more of a science fiction version of, of this kind of survival top-down game. Uh, they do a really nice job with it, and kudos to the team that built it. Okay, so other recommendation. This is hard because I can't quite think of something that's similar to Beyond Contact that I would actually recommend playing. 
Although, what about this? I'll give you another, like, survival kind of game that does some unique things. And this is actually an interesting one that I would definitely recommend people try out because it is, it is completely free. It was a student project from a couple years ago, and it's called Arid, the Atacama Experience. And it is uh, a real, really fun little idea where you are stranded in the desert. I know, fun already. Uh, but you are you are stranded in this desert with the remnants of what look like people having been there in the past, and these invisible monsters that are uh, in the cave systems underneath. And the thing that it does really well is, you know, it has the basic survival mechanics. You know, you have to be mindful of, you know, food and water and all of that. But you also have to be aware of the sun, because the sun is beating down on you, and you can get sunburn, and you can... Uh, experience negative health effects by being exposed to the sun for too long. Um, you eventually run across like what looks like old, rundown towns that are now abandoned, and have to figure out what's going on with those. Uh, it's got some g really neat stuff, uh, I thought, going into it, and it's not necessarily like the best version of a survival crafting game. Uh, but considering that it was like a student project that they made for free for the passion of it, uh, I think it's a really neat game. And I think it brings just a few little unique ideas to it and uh, a little personality all of its own that make it worth checking out, if just for a moment. Just for a little bit. What can you lose? It's a free game. Go for it. Okay, so I am going to meet with the other faction that lives in this cave. Uh, they are called the Mushcaps. Uh, they are sentient mushrooms. I inadvertently stumbled across one of them recently when I thought that I could eat mushrooms down here, uh, but it turns out uh, that that mushroom was called Trevor, and uh, we've made friends with his tribe. And uh, I am going to now offer this wonderful array of morals, which I'm starting to think was probably a bad idea. They might actually take offense at that. We'll find out. Come with me. We're going to go check that out. I just have to gather up all the mushrooms that I'm going to give them. Um, oh, no, that looks... That, that looks exactly like Becky. She's not going to want to eat that. What? Why did you leave? Why do you have do you have a problem with mushroom people? Look, Becky really wanted to meet you or eat you. I can't remember what she said. But mushrooms have a tendency to talk a little bit odd. You, you, 